Hello, welcome to hopefully the first of many tutorials suggested by you, my subscribers. All right, uh, I was asked a great question by someone. Uh, if I don't own a Macintosh computer, what's a great digital audio workstation, a DAW that I can use to record music? Well, there are many options out there, such as Pro Tools, Ableton Live, there are Fruity Loops, but I think one of the best practical options is this program called Reaper. If you go to their website, which I'll post in the link, uh, or excuse me, in the description, I'll post a link in the description, um, you can go to their website, they have a free download there. The first time you open it, this little thing pops up and says, Reaper is not free. It is a paid software product, just like the one you buy in a box from a store. If you use it more than 30 days, you are required to purchase a license. You have been evaluating Reaper for approximately one day. You have run Reaper five times for a total of one hour, two minutes, and 41 seconds. Um, then it goes on to say their licenses are reasonably priced, and they are. You can get them right now for $40, just a personal license, a small business license. Um, and then it says, we are showing you this message. <clears throat> Instead of crippling this evaluation version of Reaper, because we do not feel that technological enforcement of licensing policy is in the best interest of our customers. That way, um, after the uh, 30 days is up, you will still be able to run Reaper, but it's on you and your conscience to buy a license, which I would highly suggest you do. Um, I probably will if I continue to use Reaper past the 30 days. I don't know if I will because um, I use Logic Pro, which I love, but I would like to have another uh, DAW, say, on, a, on a, a good DAW on a Windows system. So when that time comes, I will definitely purchase Reaper. So then you'll click Still Evaluating. All right. If this is your first run of Reaper, it will want to configure your audio interface and just audio configurations. It'll look something like this. I am using my Profire 2626 multi-channel. Uh, so you would, if you don't have an audio interface, you can still run Reaper, obviously. But uh, if you do have an audio interface, I suggest you plug it in, get it working. It is a tremendous benefit for recording audio. The next thing you want to do while you're on this menu is select MIDI device, and I have enabled the MIDI functions within and without of my audio interface as well. Uh, if you don't have a MIDI interface, that's okay. You can get USB MIDI through certain keyboards. I have two M-Audio MIDI controllers that run USB. That's fine as well. Once you get that set up, you're ready to go. I will talk very briefly about the basic layout here. Uh, down below is your mixer. You can change what shows up here, but right now just default is mixer. Right above is um, playback rate, and you can actually slow up or slow down and speed up the tempo. Right now you can put it at about 2.0, it gets higher and faster, it's really fun. So if you want to hear something really slow, you just put it into Reaper, and you drag the thing all the way over to the left, and it slows it way down. And it sounds pretty hilarious. Uh, I think if you double click it, it puts it back to 1, which is dead center. Over here are your controls, uh, back, play, pause, stop, forward, um, record. This is toggle, repeat, and this is your global automation override, and uh, different touches, read, write. Uh, I can get into those later. Probably not in this video as you won't necessarily need to worry uh, worry about them just yet. Over here is your uh, metronome clicker and your time signature. And just to change, it's very simple, you just double click or even click once and type in a different number. If you're not sure what tempo you want but you hear it in your head, it has this little tap button and you sit there tapping. Right now I'm tapping at about 115, 114 on average. Uh, very easy, very nice. All right, so to get started, you will click Track, Insert New Track. Uh, once a track pops up, this is, uh, you'll click Arm and Disarm, and you can change your inputs right here in a drop-down menu. Uh, if you're running an audio interface, it'll show you all the different inputs. If you're not, it'll probably just say Built-in Input, or, uh, you know, like a built-in microphone or the standard input on the back of your computer or the side of your laptop, whatever. Uh, so right now I'll just keep it where it is. I don't want to get into too much detail on how to record audio because I want to focus on MIDI. Standard solo buttons, mute buttons. Uh, this is very important. This is your effects window. And uh, Reaper uh, comes full, fully functional with uh, Cocos uh, effects. And... Uh, VSTs, uh, plugins, 
like they have some delay, some compression, some EQ. They even have a pitch uh, correction software that is actually really, really nice. Uh, all these are fully functional and they're very helpful for mixing and adding effects to things, whatnot. After you've selected your inputs, you will simply just click the record button. Now, I think standard default is to not have any metronome when you record, and I'll tell you how to turn that on. After you record a file, something will pop up, say, select file to save or delete. You can simply click save, or you can delete it if you don't like it. I highly suggest if you're recording different takes of things, you click rename selected, and say you want it to be called vocal take one or something. I'll just cancel that. And I'll save it to your media bin, so if you accidentally delete a file, you can just go back and get it, and you know what it's called. Uh, because you named it that. Alright, so I'll delete all because I'm not going to use that. Okay. So now I have another empty track. Okay, now I'll show you how to enable the metronome for recording. You click Options, Metronome Enabled. That will, when you hit the record button, it'll play the metronome at your selected speed. It's pretty catchy. Again, I didn't record anything, so I'll hit delete all. Okay. Uh, underneath enable metronome is metronome and pre-roll settings. This is very nice. Uh, you can click run metronome during playback. I don't like having the metronome when I'm listening back to what I recorded, so you can just uncheck that. Uh, run metronome during recording. Yes, you want that. And you can change the count in. I know we just have one measure, which is four beats if you're in 4-4. Four, four. You can change the metronome volume, the metronome gain, all that stuff. All right, let's delete the audio track and select a under track insert virtual instrument on new track <clears throat> excuse me okay under instruments is this will show you all the instruments uh, the virtual instruments audio units and plugins that you have installed on your computer right now I have the play engine installed I have and a fully functional contact for demo which you can get from contacts uh, website it is, <clears throat> like I said, fully functional, their newest version of Contact, along with some sound sample libraries, demos that you can download. It'll run 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it stops working. But if you quit the program, start it up again, and relaunch uh, Contact, it'll work for another 15 minutes. So it's a great way of getting to know how to run virtual instruments, see what instruments you like, and just kind of get a feel for it. So I'm going to launch East West here really fast. Uh, wants me to set up. Nope. I'm just gonna hit no and ignore that. Okay. Again, this is your window where you have effects. Uh, right now, my instrument is like I said, East West, and you can add or remove it, and this will take you back to add other instruments or other effects. And you can access this window at any time by clicking the FX button. So if you have I'm going to do options, insert new track, you click effects, you click instruments, and then you select east-west or whatever you have installed, that'll do it. But I don't need to do that, that was just to review. Alright, so once you pick a uh, an instrument, a virtual instrument or a sound library you want to use, you will select a patch. This is the particular window I'm using, this is the play engine by east-west very powerful uh, it's a pretty solid library most of my <clears throat> most of my external libraries are east west products i'll just load a spiccato for 18 violins take a little bit to load da, 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 da. okay there we go once it's loaded i will go to the player screen and this is where you can tweak the individual settings of the instrument, like mic positions and volumes and delay and reverb, all that stuff. I'll get into East-West products later if you guys like. But for right now, I'll just say that's basically what it does. If you've plugged in the right MIDI tracks and all that stuff, uh, this should just work. You'll play your MIDI controller and it should sound something like this. <laughs> so on, so forth. Uh, to record, 
you, like I said, you just click the record button. Alright, I just recorded MIDI data. And the MIDI data looks something <clears throat> like this. Oh, by the way, if you use the scroll button on your mouse, it just zooms in and out really easy. So if you double click on your track that you just laid down, this shows you all the MIDI data. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain right now, but basically it shows you the notes on the keyboard, what notes you pressed at what point in time on the measure, and what velocity. You can change your views down here for different uh, events, is what they're called in MIDI. Uh, you can explore around with this later. Alright, now that you have your track, uh, something important that you need to learn and it's very handy for recording precise, uh, especially for things like drums, uh, that you want to be very exact is it's quantizing. So if you select your track, um, yes, select, you go edit item processing, quantize item positions to grid, and your little quantize menu will pop up. I think the default is 16th notes. And if you, they have different options. T next to something means triplets, but for now, because I'm in 4 4, 16th notes basically, it takes something that you play and moves it to the nearest 16th note, which is a single beat is broken up into four beats, and every measure is broken up into four beats, so that equals 16 beats per measure. Kind of makes sense. Uh, you click process, and now this is quantized to a beat or everything to the nearest 16th note. And it will sound something like this. Yep, that's a great tune, that is. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, once you have quantizing down, that should help really make things sound solid and stick together. Uh, as for anything else it's I like this program because it's very very user friendly it's very customizable in terms of options I think they have some skins you can download uh, on their website anyways it's a lot of fun and like I said a, a license right now is only 40 bucks I think it'll go up to six, 60 bucks when they release uh, Reaper 4 I think it is but for now it's just 40 bucks <clears throat> if you got 40 bucks to spare and you want a solid DAW I would highly suggest this. It works for Mac, it works for Windows, probably works on Linux, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really a Linux user, so someone can tell me if they want to. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if there's anything else you want me to do, any more videos, tutorials, whatever, just say the word. Alright, thanks for watching.